from the Heart Center Rink on the campus of Holy Cross in Worcester, Massachusetts. Charter Communications and Charter TV3 proudly presents live coverage of NCAA hockey. Tonight, it's a huge Atlantic hockey tilt as Holy Cross welcomes in the Black Knights of Army West Point. Hello, everyone, and welcome inside the rink. Kevin Shea alongside former Holy Cross standout Mike McGuire. And Mike, the second half of the season has begun. It's the stretch run right now for league teams. And Holy Cross has won four of the last five weekend series. This group feels good about the way they're playing right now, and certainly their head coach, David Berard, does. Yeah, this is a critical time in the season. Um, I mean, we've talked about this in the past. Every team in the Atlantic makes the postseason. This is the time when you want to get hot. You need momentum going into the playoffs. The season hasn't gone the way Holy Cross has wanted so far, but like you said, they just won last Saturday at Sacred Heart and they need to pick up momentum going into the playoffs. All right, it is Holy Cross and Army West Point. We're back with the opening face-off right after this. I'm District Attorney Joe Early, Jr., and I'm proud to partner with Charter Communications with our pledge to help raise awareness that bullying should not be tolerated. From local school students, here's our message. It's nice to be important, but it's more important to be nice. Be a friend. We need to foster safe environments for students in their schools and communities. Join the anti-bully crusade. Take a stand to lend a hand. Don't be a bully. Presented by the law offices of Joseph J. Corriglia. I feel a little bit like the Muppet guy who lives in the, in the garbage can. It's been an issue for a long time in terms of just so, so much volume of traffic. Bypassing the canal district and the merchants in the canal district. Shame on you. For all these years, Kelly Squares actually work. I don't want to waste more of my valuable time denigrating this idea that you're <laughs> coming up with. <laughs> Local news from Central Massachusetts for Central Massachusetts. A teenager is rescued in Westboro Monday after falling through an icy pond. A new federal program aims to help combat drug addiction. Mass State Police bomb squad responding to reports of a live explosive device. Significant snow is expected Saturday night into Sunday. Reporters in the field. And an in-depth local forecast. Worcester News tonight on Charter TV3. All right, the national anthem being played, and we're getting ready for Holy Cross and Army West Point. Hockey night in Worcester tonight, Atlantic hockey tilt, and Mike, you got a chance to talk to Coach Riley at Army. Uh, what does he think about this team? And and again, a lot of parity in the league. There's Coach yeah, Berard. It, you know, I talked to him about a lot of different things. They, they're an interesting team, I and mean, on paper, there's a lot of similarities between these two teams. They both lost a lot to graduation. They've Kind of, I want to say struggled scoring five on five, but it hasn't been a strength. But Army's power play is is off the charts. They're third in the nation in, in, in power play, which it's one of those teams. You know, I asked I asked Coach Riley, you know, try and explain this to me. Like the, the fact that you, if you score so much on the power play, usually it points to you have a skilled team that scores all the time. But they have it, and his, you know, I, I think the trend that he feels might happen is that there might be an uptick in scoring uh, because they do have some skilled guys, but it's going to be going to be interesting. Both teams are physical, so I think we're in for a pretty physical, entertaining game. Well, we saw Eric Gordon in net for Holy Cross, the freshman, and Trevin Kozlowski, the sophomore, for Army West Point. Interesting thing about these two teams, too. They both rely on a lot of balance for scoring. Leading scorer on both teams is defenseman. So especially Army, had their defense will join the rush a lot. And we are underway. Holy Cross wins the opening draw. And the Crusaders 
retreating back to get it. Matt Slick on the run. Sarawick throws it on. And that's sticked aside by Kozlowski. Battle to keep it in. Peter Cronella, one of the veterans and one of the leaders on this team, an assistant captain from East Long Meadow, Mass. Western Massachusetts, Springfield Cathedral. Now they're Pope Francis and ranked number one in the state in hockey. Holy Cross sends it in deep and they'll go for a change. Crusaders, one of the things, and this is always the case whenever you're playing one of the service academies, the coaches will say we have to match their work ethic because we know that they're going to be tough. Oh, right in front. Gordon tested and makes a save. Army just couldn't hold on to that one. Yep, be ready to work is what, what Cook, the way Coach Berard said it, and it's true. These, the academies always play hard. Holy Cross, Anthony Vincent, the talented freshman. A tough player, one of, Coach Bride said, one of the toughest guys on this team. Non-stop energy adds a lot of edge to this squad. Vincent keeps it in. Durar on the four check. Goes for the big hit. Coglin stands up his man at center ice. There's Johnny Coglin, as you mentioned, the leading scorer for Holy Cross. Did Robinson get a piece of it? No. He didn't. Yeah, Coughlin's had a great season. Um, I've seen a couple of non-conference games, Merrimack and, and UMass. I thought he was one of the better players on the Holy Cross team, so it's not surprising that he's the leading scorer. He's having his best season of his career, too, offensively. A career high in points for Johnny Coughlin. Holy Cross able to win the draw and get it out of the zone. They're winning face-offs early on here, Mike. Yeah, that's, I mean, puck possession these days is so important. and Especially with Army getting pucks deep. Um, Coach Brard said they thrive on transition. So keeping the play in front of them and going from kind of the neutral zone into the attacking zone and having the defenseman join the rush. And the, in particular, Wilkinson, number seven, and McAfee, number two. Um, you know, I asked, I asked uh, Coach Riley, you know, from now to the end of the season, who do you think is going to be the leading scorer? And he mentioned Wilkinson was one of the guys, which is, who's a defenseman. So both teams rely on on balanced scoring contributions from everybody, and they're trying to figure out now, you know, since they both lost a lot to graduation, who's going to step up and be the guy to produce. Holy Cross, 19 different players have scored for the Crusaders this season, and no one player accounts for more than 10 percent of their offense. So it it has been a uh, a diverse scoring attack. Top of the slot, and Gordon. With a good save, it goes up into the rafters, and the faceoff will come to the right of the freshman, Eric Gordon. That was Dalton McAfee, who you talked about with Coach Riley, who just got the puck, kept walking in, walking in, had some space, had a good look at it, and Gordon with a good stop. Yeah, McAfee, one of the captains as well. I asked Coach about, tell me about his two captains, McAfee and, uh, and Taylor Maria, number 17, and I mean, he said they exude leadership, which, for an Army team, that yeah. says a lot. You're right. It's a, it takes a different breed of young man. Yeah. That one chipped just over the crossbar as Army gets some traffic in front. Best scoring chance for the Black Knights. And icing. Faceoff will come back in the Holy Cross zone. It's a good, good pace and, and a crispness to, crispness to the game, but kind of still feeling each other out right now. And if you're a team that has had trouble scoring, like both teams have, I would assume getting traffic in front of the net. Absolutely. Just try to get a, a greasy goal, a, you know, Absolutely. score any way you can. I mean, we talk about possession a lot, and it is a possession game because the skill is so high. But Cronella, here we go. Mini breakaway, go oh, the backhand, and he's stoned. Good save by Kozlowski. Stayed in deep in his net and stayed with it the whole way. That's a good move, too. Good move and a good save. Spencer Trapp, who has been one of the best players for Holy Cross since he stepped on campus, out there now on the blue line, and he will go for a change. Here's Johnny Coughlin trying to connect with Vincent in front. Vincent battling, gets the puck. Vincent and Laffin. It was deflected, Laffin just couldn't get a stick on it. Now it's picked off again by the Crusaders. 
But winning those one-on-one -on -one battles on the wall, too, all hockey coaches will talk about that. Vincent doing a nice job in that last possession to get the puck. Yeah, the small area games, I mean, if you follow USA Hockey, that's the theme, is winning, doing well in small area games, and a lot of times it's those one-on-one -on -one battles. And Dolan goes back deep for it. Bryce Dolan, a freshman from Barrington, Rhode Island. Robinson trying to fight off the defender, curls back. Skelly throws it towards the net, it's batted away. And Army comes back the other way with it. Holy Cross chips it forward. Just couldn't connect. Logan Ferguson was the one who had the puck on the battle, and then Robinson tried to center. Dolan, wraparound attack for Army, and just missed. May have hit a body in front. Holy Cross skates out with it. Durar. Holy Cross will go for a change. Here's Trap. Trap gives for Mackey. Mackey bearing in, try to connect with O'Leary, just couldn't do it. O'Leary goes for the puck, and Army collects now. It's poked away. Mackey wins the race. Good job by Army to block that in front. Dalton McAfee, a great two way player. We talked about his offensive prowess. McAfee with a nice job knocking down the centering pass on the last Holy Cross opportunity. Yeah, I, th I think there's uh, an opportunity. Both Holy Cross has had two really good chances. Both of them stemmed from their own breakout. And I think you could attribute a little bit of Army's defenseman playing a little bit offensive. One of them was just a great, really great breakout. Dalton Skelly passing it up uh, to the center to Dar. One timer deflected up into the screen. Another good chance for Army. That was Eric Butte who snapped his stick on the deflection. Butte, a local product from Belmont, Massachusetts, 6'1", 175 freshman, and he gets the stick on it and deflects it up into the netting. Faceoff will come to the right of the goaltender, Eric Gordon. The captain laughing will take for Holy Cross. And they're going to redo it. David Berard in his fifth season as the head coach of Holy Cross. They have had four straight winning seasons in the Atlantic Hockey League, and that's a school record. The blast from the point just wide. Those shots always tough, especially when they come strong off the backboards and the end boards, Mike. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, they almost I, act, act as a pass. Yeah. I think what you said earlier, getting bodies in front and getting some shots is never a bad idea in situations like this. I mean, with the parity, with the parity in this league, I mean, we were joking about it. It's almost like, you know, you're going to be tied in the third period. It's going to be 2-2 in the third period, and whoever makes the plays in the third is going to win the game. You're There's right. There's just so much parity. Yeah, it's incredible. AIC at the top of the league now. Remember, that was I mean, it two years ago they brought in all the guys from Sweden and mm -hmm. Europe, a lot of European players? What a turnaround. No, and I mean, not just the past couple years, but 20 years ago, oh, they, oh, were, they were a um, at just a basement, basement yeah. dweller. So they've done a really nice job. I mean, uh, you know, first in the Atlantic and really good team. And you look at the upgrades, obviously the facility upgrades here. We'll talk about everything, the weight room, the training room. Coach Berard talking about just what a difference even the training room has made with the technology and things they have. That shot blocked in front by Cronella. That one got through to Gordon, who makes the stop. But just the way that they can help the hockey players and all the student athletes recover, like that's an advancement, yeah. a huge advancement. I'm jealous every time I come oh, here. The cold tubs, <laughs> the sleeves. Yeah. Everything. Army on the break, two on three, and Gordon did a nice job to see that puck. Yeah, it's been, it's been it, not as I expected. Um, I, I expected Army to have a lot more chances off the rush and Holy Cross to play more in the Army zone. It's been the exact opposite. Army's had more possession in the Holy Cross zone, and Holy Cross has had more chances off the rush. Kind of the opposite of what you, you know, when you hear Army's got 
D that love to join the rush, you'd think run and gun, but they've done a good job getting some pressure. Gerrard is kicked out of the faceoff circle. Neil Robinson takes it and wins the draw for Holy Cross. Gerard chips it up. Holy Cross will come two on two. Robinson curls and fires. And a glove save by Kozlowski, who holds on, and the faceoff will be in the Army zone. I think it's it's Yeah, here's a good chance. This started from Dalton Skelly, a really nice breakout from Dalton Skelly, where they just got out of the zone and had nine man rush and got a good good shot on net and face off in the offensive There's zone. An interception and Army comes the other way on the rush. And offsides. Holy Cross taking exception to the shot after the whistle. Yeah, it's kind of one of those these situations where it's been a pretty clean game so yep. far. You, you almost don't want it getting out of hand because Army's just got one of the their power plays just been out of this world. Half of their goals, so five right? On five on five power play. I feel like five on five would benefit Holy Cross. So hopefully they'll let it play. And that one's out of the zone. Foot race for the puck. It's going to be won by Holy Cross. O'Leary tried to go five hole. Kozlowski the save. And they jam in front. I mean, O'Leary just won that race. Yeah. He just turned on the Jets. Is, uh, is, oh, oh, Holy Cross is going to get a penalty out of this, I think. Yeah, I mean, O'Leary just had another level here of speed to win that battle. As simple as that. I mean, he is in the game against Quinnipiac. It, it wasn't a great game. They lost 4-1. I'd say he was the highlight of that game. He scored and um, kind of showed what he just showed there, which is just, he's fast. Oh, it was Army that got the, uh, Army whistled for the infraction. So it'll be a Holy Cross power play. First of the night for the Crusaders. Laffin will These take the draw. These face-offs are huge when you're on the power play in the offensive zone. Trap and Coughlin. Vincent and Ferguson, the power play unit for Holy Cross. Here's Vincent. Back and forth behind the net. Chipped up and out of the zone. It's going to be a foot race for the puck. Army wins the foot race. Now they'll just try to rag the puck That's for a little bit. That's a smart bit. play by Wilson there. Army able to just take some time off of this penalty. Coughlin stands his man up at the blue line. That was... Trevor Maruya. And kept in the zone. Huh. Seemed like a little bit of a late offside call. Yeah. That was a smart play by Wilson. Kill about 10 seconds in that power play. Bringing the puck back out of the zone. Gerard will take the draw against Dominic Franco. One of the big guns for Army. Franco goes 6'5 and 218. Here's Robinson. The second power play unit is on for Holy Cross. Durar down the wall. Slides it back. Skelly. Goes D to D. Durar throws it in front, deflected by Robinson. Here's Durars. Skelly to Brophy. Brophy looks behind the net. And it gets out of the zone. Holy Cross will have to clear and regroup. Durar tries to keep the puck possession. Army wins the battle. And they ring it out all the way down to Gordon, who has to cover up with 25 seconds remaining on the man advantage. Nice like, job by the Army yeah, penalty killing. Yeah, I feel team. like Holy yeah. Cross is making it a little too easy on him. I, I hate to sound simplistic, but if you watch like the Bruins power play, for example, there's all you know. Patrice Bergeron stands kind of on the on the right in the right circle, and he, he's almost a distraction. They they get it to him a lot for a shot from there, but almost feel like they just had too many guys on the perimeter. For that one. 
Coughlin sends it in deep around the wall. Battle for it. Three Holy Cross players. Robinson coming out with it. Ferguson, rather. Here's Spencer Trapp. Coughlin, now we're all even. The penalty's up. Oh, watch out. Coming right out of the penalty box. Army with a middle mini break, but Spencer Trapp doing a nice job hustling back. Ferguson takes the body. Trapp behind his own net. Here's Coughlin. Coughlin sends it out. O'Leary hustling for the puck in deep. Here comes Army on the rush through the neutral zone. The Black Knights send it in front. No one there. Good back checking from Holy Cross. Ask Coach Riley who's the fastest skater on, on his team. This guy, number nine, right here, Hater. He just showed why. He can turn it on. <laughs> Off the back of the net. He's trying to center it. Battle behind for the puck, won by Mackey. And he called that on Holy Cross, going on the penalty kill. Looked like it might have been an inadvertent trip. Like, oh, he called it on them. He called a trip on Army. Nice. I, and here's Mackey. Yep. Mackey's being helped off the ice now. It looked like he got tripped into the Holy Cross play. All right, we'll take a timeout from the Hart Center. We are scoreless here in the first period. Holy Cross and Army West Point. I'm District Attorney Joe Worley, and I'm proud to partner with Charter Communications with our pledge to help raise awareness that bullying should not be tolerated. From local school students, here is our message. If you see someone getting bullied, stand up for them. You never know what a few words can do. We need to foster safe environments for students in their schools and their communities. Join the anti-bully crusade. Take a stand to lend a hand. Don't be a bully. Presented by the Law Offices of Joseph J. Coriglia. Hi, my name is Tiffany Holland. I'm Zach Lanning. I'm Megan McGeary. My name is Ed Ryan. And welcome to College of the Holy Cross. So when I was looking at colleges, I had a ton of questions. Like, can I play my violin and study to be a doctor? This is where I ask, how many ways can I surprise people? What does it mean to be on a team? Who am I and where am I headed? At Holy Cross. The more I ask, the more I learn. Holy Cross. Ask more. Here's some of the Army pressure. Uh, they're pretty good off of uh, off of the rush and on transition. And like we said, they've they've kept Holy Cross in their zone a little bit with some good. Here's some of the good chances here. They're getting a lot of bodies in front on the, on some of these shots that we have a good vantage point. Gordon cannot see a lot of those shots, so they've been lucky that they've just hit hit the traffic in front. There's Coach Riley, the third member of his family to coach. Army West Point hockey, his grandfather, his father, and and he, they, Army is, uh, Army hockey program has only known Coach Riley. Oh uh, yeah, there's the, I thought he was calling Holy Cross on, on tripping the Army player into that. That was a good look though. I think the ref made the right call. So Holy Cross will go on their second power play of the night. Ferguson had a tremendous freshman season. Army, able to send it out down the ice. Spencer Trapp gets to the blue line. Back for Laffin. Laffin sends it in deep. Battle for the puck. Vincent battling along the wall. Coughlin on the wing now for Ferguson cycles it trap up top Vincent one timer deflected wide nice play 1-0 even now it's one minute even remaining on the Holy Cross power play second of the night for the Crusaders 843 remaining in the first period Spencer trap in deep trap around the net wraps around Denied there. 
Darar tees it up, blocked in front. One thing you can count on from Army teams year in and year out, going back to when you played, Mike, is they're going to block oh, shots, yeah. they're going to sacrifice their body. High character kids, as you'd expect, across the board. Dalton Skelly keeps it in. Gerard rifles it for the far corner. Three Holy Cross players along the wall, two Army skaters out there. Now a third joins the three-on-three -three battle. 13 seconds remaining in the Holy Cross man advantage. Skelly just missed. Rifles a wrist shot through from the blue line. Gerard plays the body. Skelly retreats. Collects the puck, and we're all even. Skelly with speed, deflected by an Army defenseman and covered up by Kozlowski. Not, not, a, not a great power play, but still, there are a couple things I, I liked in that power play. There's, one was the breakout. There's this trend to kind of rush up as a, as a four-man unit, get to the blue line, and then they'll clog it, and you throw it all the way back. On that one, I... I I like Spencer Trapp just taking the puck into the zone. I almost feel like he caught Army off guard. The other thing I liked was the shot by Durar. I mean, the slap shot is so not out of vogue these days, but if you're that close, I mean, Ovechkin still, still scoring with a slap shot. That's true. Tee it up. You just don't see it a lot these days, and sometimes I feel like it's your best option, especially when he, I mean, he had a good, he was in pretty tight. He just got blocked. 7-12 remaining in the first period. Scoreless here at the Hart Center. Holy Cross and Army West Point, an Atlantic hockey matchup. Kevin Shea alongside of former Just Holy Wilkinson. Cross standout Mike McGuire. This here comes good. Army with speed. Wilkinson and broken up, and Holy Cross able to clear it. Kessel, call it. Call it. Shot is deflected up into the netting. And the faceoff will be in the Army zone. Mitch Collett, one of the veterans on this team. Smartest kid on the team, by Nin popular opinion. <laughs> and Berard also old. thinks he's the fastest skater. A good guy to have out there. Uh, laughing. I want to say it's organic chemistry, I think. Well, I think or some sort right. of physics. Yes. Collett takes the draw. Army wins. Black Knights break out. Send it in deep. Vincent goes back for it. Tried to chip it up. Holy Cross now call it. With Laffin, the second line is out there. Anthony Vincent. Holy Cross lost a lot of scoring from last year's team due to graduation. One of the players, Scott Pooley, we were talking about, is having a phenomenal professional career. Yeah, he has um, had a short stint with the Toronto Marlies in the AHL, but when he's been in the East Coast League, he's just been absolutely lighting oh. it up. And he's I mean, playing in a great spot. Newfoundland, where they absolutely love their hockey. Great. They're rock stars. Awesome. The rock. Cross. TJ Moore is doing well, too. He's playing overseas. And I'm going to say Norway, and leading scorer on his team. But yeah, they lost a third of their scoring from last year. <laughs> so, so it's kind of as expected, you know, they're yep. um, figuring out who's going to who's gonna score, but. Gerard, block hands. Stoned in front by Kozlowski. Holy Cross will retreat, Skelly. Just outside of his blue line. Holy Cross gets a change. Will Brophy comes on. Shot wow. one timer in front. And Robinson was robbed. Skelly in on the forecheck to try to break it up. But Robinson with a beautiful opportunity between the circles. Kozlowski right there for the save. We were talking about Kozlowski's save percentage is 9 yeah. 918 save percentage. I mean, that's at 918 save percentage is, is insanely yeah. good. And Rob, Robinson's the guy you want shooting it. He's got a really, really good shot. I mean, that all started from, I, I get another thing that's not really invoked, the dump and chase. 
which right, you, right. You, you never, if you have possession of the puck, you want to skate it in, but sometimes dump and chase and then go win, or win a race to the puck, which is exactly what happened. Drawer won the race to the puck and then found Robinson in the slot. It seems to be working right, right now for Holy Cross. Old school Bruins hockey. That yeah. was goes, takes you back to the 80s yeah. in the old garden, the dump and chase. Try to wear teams down. So it's better than a turnover. Right. Last from the point, Cronella blocked it. Coglin up to Cronella. Army keeps it in. Brophy behind his net is Ryan Liebold. Coglin. Gains the Army zone, and now Liebold behind the net. Liebold battling for it. Army clears. Coglin back to collect. Brophy. Quickly, Serwin. We, you and I talked about this, the, the speed of the game. Here's Cronella behind the net. How quickly teams now can jump on a puck and turn a seemingly harmless turnover or dump deep in the opposing zone into a scoring chance literally two seconds later. Yeah, and on top of that, the, the, the passing, um, the, the sheer just velocity of the passing, <laughs> you know, and the speed that they're skating, I mean, you, you just transition and go from defense to offense so quickly. Um, and the skill level on top of that, too, is... I mean, you talk about saucer passes back in the, you know, even 10 years ago, it was something you did if there was a, a stick in front of you, but it was one of these things not every player could do it so easily. Right. These kids all do it so easily. It's incredible. Vincent in on the four check, and he finishes his check. And especially, in, and Mike, you know this, but when you're playing, and this is the way that the, the league is set up, you know, you're off all week and you play two games on the weekend. Sometimes that Friday night can set the tone if you're finishing your checks, if you're kind of leaning on the other team. Maybe it, maybe it pays dividends in the second or third period the next night. Yeah, absolutely. Ferguson finishes his check on the four check. If you're ever in a situation to mentally defeat the other team on Friday night, makes Saturday night a lot better. That's one of the things I like about this Holy Cross team is, you know, like last week they had a tough one to Sacred Heart. Weird game where it was 1-1 in the third period. They ended up losing 5-2. You know, it was 1-1 with 10 minutes left yeah, in the third halfway period. Through. And, you know, that's a tough loss. And Holy Cross came back on Saturday with a huge 4-1 win. I feel like these kids really don't um, don't get down on, no, on right. losses. They come right back. And and Coach Berard said that one of the one of the great things about this group is that their their mental resilience and their belief in one another and belief that they're going to win games and that they're going to win the league championship. You know that that's Absolutely. never wavered. They've they've had some adversity in a tough first half of the season, but that self confidence and the fact that they stuck together. Yeah. And I know that, I mean, that's where a lot of these non-conference games help. I mean, they played back-to-back. -back, they played UMass and Providence when both of them were top three in the country. Yeah. And, yeah, you know, I was at the UMass game, and, I mean, UMass has some, I think, probably the best player in the country or one of the two best players in the country, Kale McCarr. And it was 2-1 in the third period, and there was a few times I'm like, you know, Holy Cross is going to tie this. So they could skate with anyone in the country. There's David Berard you see behind the bench, and his son Brett is part of the U-17 national team, the national program. We'll get to that thought in a second. Hockey Night in Worcester on Charter TV 3 is presented by the law office of Joseph J. Cariglia. So Brett Berard playing out in Michigan, and this is part of the USA development program. So. You go to school there, you train there, you play there, and uh, they're off to Sweden tomorrow for an international tournament. But, I mean, it's it's an incredible honor. You are literally, they pick the top players in the country at that age group, and he's only a sophomore. So he'll be there, the U17 team this year, the U18 team next year. 
call it. And then he'll have to find somewhere to go for his senior year because it's just a two-year commitment. But I mean, uh, they're turning out NHL star. They've been that U18 team has been turning out NHL stars, lots of them, um, household names. And you know, if you look at next year's draft, the number one pick in the draft will be Jack Hughes, who's on that 18 team. You know, Holy Cross got a chance to play those guys right after the new year, and I mean. They're, they're guys you're going to see in the NHL next year. <laughs> First round pick, so. It's crazy. He's on a nice, Brett's on a nice trajectory. He's a good player. I've seen him play. He's really good. And next year, that U18 team will come here to the Hart Center and play Holy Cross, which will be a special night. That's really cool. For, for the Burrard family. Yeah. Dalton Skelly carries it out himself. Skelly sends it in deep. Ferguson blocks it on the far wall. Ferguson gets some help over there from Neil Robinson. Robinson picked off by the net. And here comes Franco. Franco on the rush, centers. Sent back to Franco. Franco still has it. Sends it up top to the blue line. One minute left in the period. Blocked in front, loose puck. Goes to the right of Eric Gordon. Possession here, keeping it in the Holy Cross zone. Shot on, blocked in front. Hogland blocked it, Holy Cross clears. Army winds it up for another rush. Gordon behind his own net, gets to Coglin. 28 seconds remaining in the period. And icing is the call. Army, Army oftentimes has, I mean, is it a couple times I'm like, wait, who, who are the forwards here? They, a lot of times they'll have four, four forwards pretty active in the offensive zone. Big face off here, Laffin in his own zone. 23 seconds remaining. Scrum for the puck. Skelly trying to kick it over to Laffin. Call it. There to battle as well. Army wins it. Shot on Gordon with a nice save with nine seconds remaining. Holy Cross just wants to hold the fort here, and they do. They don't want to give one up there in the final seconds of a pretty even period, too, in terms of not a whole lot of scoring chances either way. Yeah, I thought it was very even. The uh, one thing I'm I'll be watching for is penalties. Holy Cross had two power plays, and just the nature of refereeing usually evens out. So hopefully. That's a good point. Well, at the end of one period, we are scoreless here from the Hart Center. Holy Cross zero, Army zero. We will take a timeout, and we, when we come back, Brenna Wilson will sit down with the godfather of hockey here at Holy Cross, Peter Van Buskirk, who's been involved with both the men's and women's programs here. Accidents involving distracted driving injured over 400,000 Americans last year. If you or a loved one has been injured in a car or motorcycle accident, before you call your insurance company, call the law offices of Joseph J. Coriglia. Our attorneys have helped tens of thousands of clients receive millions of dollars in settlements for over 50 years. Don't stand alone against the big insurance companies. Call the law offices of Joseph J. Coriglia for a free consultation. We don't get paid unless you do. Good rivalry tonight in high school boys basketball. Nick Soder with a wicked swat leads to the offense. And it's Soder cashing in from long distance in girls basketball. First quarter, Reagan McDonald with a three. In girls hockey, Carolina O'Keefe chipping one home for the goal. Bishop's going up 1-0. Nuzzalillo, far down. Oh, snipe show. That's a sweet goal. Welcome back to the intermission of Holy Cross and Army Hockey. We're joined by the women's hockey coach, Peter Van Buskirk. Thank you for joining us. You're welcome. Now, first of all, you guys are in the midst of a historic season for the program. And, you know, what does it mean to be in Hockey East this year? Oh, well, yeah, that's, that was our destination, I think, at the beginning when we started talking about maybe developing a women's program here, knowing that all the other sports at Holy Cross were Division I. Um, we knew it would take some time. 
uh, and when it did come, it, it, it happened pretty quickly. So, and we knew it was a big jump. It's quite a challenge, quite a scheduling challenge. And uh, we've uh, approached it the right way. The kids are enthusiastic. They work very hard. They've been very consistent practice after practice and game after game in the effort that they show. So we made improvements and um, I've got a great staff and they're working hard to uh, increase the, uh, the talent level that we have and, and we're looking forward to the future's bright, I think, for women's hockey. Yeah, you know, going off of that, you've pretty much been involved with the women's program from the ground up. So how, how great is it to see that it's reached this point? You know, you've seen this. Well, it's always, it was always nice. Actually, it was great at the early stages when it was a little bit new to me. And, and as it grew, it became great. So the level of play is just a faster level of play because they have more players. I think the depth, we certainly have some as well. Uh, but we'll increase that number in order to increase our ability to get into the middle of the mix a little bit higher than we are right now. But it's been fantastic, and, um, and I'm so happy that it's happened. And you kind of talked about this. It is, it is a challenge, you know, reaching to this, the new conference, but what are you seeing from your players? Well, you know, their approach. I, I, I mean, when you're with a group working day in and day out, that's who you become, and, and you really know them and know how they go about working towards what they want. Uh, and you start appreciating that that effort that they show and the improvement that they also show as time goes on. Uh, now that you know, often one of the success factors is your winning and losing record, uh, but there are a lot of other definitions of success that go into that, and we fill a lot of those characters, uh, those uh, definitions, to tell you the truth. So we're really proud of the way the girls and the leadership internally of the captains and the seniors that are. Uh, you know, been around for a while and understand the challenge and, and have kind of set the tone, I think, for everybody to kind of, you know, be in the right uh, frame of mind uh, and have that mindset that will, you know, keep you going in, in tough times. You guys got the first program win against one of the top teams in the country. It's, what a way to do it um, for in the, in the new conference. What, walk me through what you remember from that game against Northeastern. Well, I remember the first four or five minutes, I think they scored two beautiful goals. And I said uh, to myself, obviously, I said, oh boy, <laughs> where's this going to lead? Uh, but you know, the nature of, of any sport is that things happen. Uh, and uh, it went from two to uh, nothing, to two to two, and then uh, three to two, four to two, and four to three, and then five to three, and, and we were able to hold on. And I think, you know, when you play a number of games in the season, uh, things can can happen. Uh, the puck, uh, you can get a little puck luck uh, that you probably need as well. And then the girls start playing well and had been playing well, and um, and those opportunities come up, and and the and you really relish when they do. I'll tell you that right now, especially when you're in a very competitive league. Now, not you've also been part of um, the men's program as well mm -hmm. before heading over to the women's program. What are some of the differences you've seen between, you know, coaching the guys and coaching the women? Well, uh, there's a strength factor difference, uh, certainly at the very beginning. Right now, I think it's closed a little bit, certainly. Uh, but otherwise, I really didn't notice any major differences. Uh, the, the, you're looking to coach. You're looking for a group of kids that are excited about doing what they're doing as, as you are, and, and you see that effort that's being put in all the time. That's what you're asking for. That's what you want. You want them to do the best they possibly can day in and day out, and for you not to get in the way of that development. And that's the way I've approached it with the men and the women. So uh, no, I've, I've really been blessed, to tell you the truth, to not only have had a chance to work at Holy Cross, but you know to be involved in working with uh, something that I did when I was a kid. So I guess uh, my life as a youngster has been prolonged over the years by being associated with them. You also coached high school before I did. college. Yes. Um, are there any challenges, you know, once you hit college with having to deal with the, the class aspect and student athlete aspect that you've seen with, with coaching or is it kind of just the same, you know? It's well, I think it's the next step in their development. Yes, you know, I think it is for anyone. Sure, it's going to be challenging, uh, as it should be, but you've prepared yourself and you were successful before. Why wouldn't you be successful in the future? That's the way I look at it, and that's what you want them, they want them to look at it as well. It's going to be some effort. It, you know, all of these things in athletics is so tied to life. There are going to be some moguls that you have to go around in order to kind of go forward. And as long as when you get stopped along the way, you get up and move forward, 
uh, you're going to learn from those mistakes. And it's just feedback along the road of developing. And also, you know, being around hockey for so long, how has recruiting changed as well? Oh, well, the, uh, recruiting has changed greatly, <laughs> certainly. Uh, uh, even for us here, moving on to D1, we have a staff now. I have a wonderful staff and great leadership with Katie LaChapelle, who will take over as head coach, and Maddie Norton, and Michaela Tassoni, both, uh, all three of them, I'm not used to, haven't been used to that, and, and certainly we need that. And, and the coverage of recruiting is just, you know, really not only in the United States, but it certainly goes to Canada and to Europe. And uh, it's from my early years coaching the men when you, you had two jobs, you know, a main job and, and another job coaching, uh, you're focusing, believe me, a number of more hours uh, off the ice than you are on the ice in order to be ready for the next season. Congratulations are also in order because you announced that you'll be retiring at the end of the season. And we kind of talked about this. What do you have planned? You know, hockey's been big for your, for your life. Are you going to take a step back and kind of relax? Uh, I, I'm kind of a relaxed guy anyways. <laughs> I think I want to get more relaxed. Uh, I, I'm looking forward to it. I mean, I've never really thought a lot about it. You know, I've enjoyed what I, I do. So I think you tend not to think about, well, what are you going to do when you retire? Mm -hmm. and, and lucky I've been in situations where I've been able to extend those years beyond the so-called retirement age. Uh, so I'm really looking for I don't necessarily have a plan, but that's okay. Uh, you know, I'll develop the plan as I kind of move along. Right. Uh, but certainly enjoying hockey in a different role. I'm just taking a different role in my life uh, and uh, looking forward to it. Yeah, that's awesome. And, you know, you've been around the school also for many years. How have you seen just the athletic program in general, you know, grow and progress over the years? Uh, well, I have. I came in the late 70s, and, uh, and of course, it was a step up for me in the, what's happening at this next higher level of play and the way they go about it. Um, and they've had to adapt as well as over the next 30, 30 plus years uh, to, to the way things are done. And um, we, as you can see, the changes, the rink is, was built in 75, but there's certainly a lot of improvements along with all of the decals of the teams that represent Hockey East for us and the Atlantic League for the men. And uh, certainly the facilities become that part of the recruiting process as well because the expectations are that you'll have those things. And, and uh, we took a big step forward in adjusting to where we were, and uh, I expect that to continue. You know, Holy Cross is a terrific place to... Uh, to come and learn and, 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 and grow. Now, what have been some of your um, fondest memories of being up here? Oh, boy. <laughs> <laughs> I'm uh, trying to nail it down yeah, just one. You know, right? it's, really, it's really kind of difficult because you, if you kind of off the top of your head start thinking about uh, this or that, you're going to miss some things that, uh, and some players. But, you know, the, the fondest memory is the journey that I've had here and the people that I've been able to uh, get to know you know, on and off the ice. That, that, that's what uh, drives me. Uh, yes, it's fun. This mm -hmm. sport, I mean, I played other sports too, and if I were involved in those, I would be just the same person and have the same enthusiasm for working to get better and, and have the kids get better in what they're doing. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for joining us. Congratulations oh, you're on the season and your uh, impending retirement you're as welcome. well. And um, good luck for the rest of the season as well. Thank you. Thank, thank, you, thank you very much. We'll have much more of the game after this. Local sports have a unique way of bringing families together, bringing generations together, bringing neighbors together. In Central Mass, you have families that have been here for years and you have grandparents that played at a certain high school and they're watching their grandson or granddaughter play at their same high school. And there's something real special about that. Everyone comes out on a Friday night for football or to support the basketball team or the softball team and everyone wants to support their team and everyone feels whether or not they have a son or daughter playing or even if they don't know anyone on the roster, they come out because they went to school there or they're from that town. And for us to be able to cover that is really unique, really special and really gratifying. We'll run into people all the time, whether they're home from college or they're visiting family and they don't live in the area anymore. Or they'll say, hey, how's my team doing? You know, how are these guys going to be this year? And so people remember where they came from. They remember their high schools. They remember their playing days. And if you were from here, you know how unique and how special it is that you can get coverage of your high school and your college.
We have a bond with uh, the community. They appreciate us, we appreciate them. To hear people cheer for you when you show up because you're just there covering the game. We're not the game, but it's cool. <laughs> I've had people tell me that we've brought high school sports to a whole new level in Central Mass because of the way we cover high school sports and cover them like they're professional athletes. Join me on the Hank Stoltz Experience. People are always asking me, what is the experience? Well, that's the beauty of it. It's everything that has to do with Central Massachusetts. From the politics of the region to the great events that are going on each and every weekend or every night right here in Central Mass. You don't want to miss a single moment as I discuss exciting new topics with a variety of different guests on each show. The action never stops on the Hank Stoltz Experience, only on Charter TV 3. Then you actually have to make the argument, we need the border to be open so heroin addicts won't become desperate. Believe me, there are people who will buy that stupid argument. I mean, because I, 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 I know how to think like these people. Look, if, if there was a way to do it and you could make money off of it, somebody would do it. These are the things CNN does. And yet, you know who's watching CNN? You're listening to The Jim Polito Show, your safe space. People listen to us up in Gardena, Fitchburg, Lemonster, Auburn, Millbury, Grafton, Sturbridge. You know, we have uh, Oxbridge. Again, this is not Worcester. We just don't talk about Worcester. We have we met selectmen on this show that want to talk about town meetings. We're a very great community. All of Worcester County, the people that I talk to each day, that listen to me each day, that watch me on Charter 193 each day. You want to talk to me? I'd love to talk to you. First period highlights, that, that was may have good, been the best scoring chance, right? That was right? the great by Peter Cornell, a good chance. That was another one by Patrick O'Leary where he just won a race to the puck. And, um, you know, looking back, some of their best chances didn't really register as shots on net. I, I actually like that slap shot chance from Gerard. It just got blocked, but. Yeah, Holy Cross out shooting Army 7-6 to six in the first period, but you and I were talking, Army had a lot more traffic in front. A lot of front. traffic. You can see it here, just a lot of traffic in front, a lot of those shots. Gordon had a tough time seeing, but, and Holy Cross had chances off the break, like they kind of off the rush, so be interesting to see what happens this period. I expected the exact opposite. The only thing that. that wasn't even was the, the power plays and the penalties. Army yeah. had two penalties, Holy Cross two power plays, and the Black Knights killed them both off. As we mentioned, Army comes in with the third best power play in the country, so it is a yeah. team that you do not want to play man down against as you look at the cold, frigid, night here in Worcester, Just Massachusetts. A nice shot of the downtown yeah. from high atop Holy Cross and Mount St. James. But Good we were pond talking, hockey weather for tomorrow. Oh, this is phenomenal pond hockey weather. Uh, you and I were talking, we were looking at the Peter Van Buskirk interview, and you had Peter as a head coach and as an assistant coach and it, you know he's, he's, he's just great. had such an impact he's such a great guy he's a great ambassador for for Holy Cross he's one of those guys that talks to you know all the parents knew him all the players loved him I mean he was he was great I, I don't understand how he's defying age I'm, he I'm looks the exact he still looks yes. like he did when I, I played 20 years ago and he was probably more fit 20 years ago than most of the players on the team and oh yeah still looks great yeah i used to see him on the bike he'd go hard on the bike and yeah. the weights and just but you're right he looks the exact same he sounds the exact same as 22 years ago for me when i met him and he's such a gentleman and just such a good person he's a guy that you anytime you talk to him you walked away with a smile yes and you're right and he knows everyone in hockey Knows everybody. Knows everyone in hockey. Great. Everyone feels the same way, likes him. And yep. He's, uh, I feel like he has evolved with the game. As the game's changed, he. Yeah, you're he, right. He's recognized and did an amazing job with that women's program. I think he started in 2002 and they won some titles. And yeah. And he knocked off Northeastern this year. Oh, that was huge. I was up here for that game. It was a fantastic game. And, you know, and obviously you're talking about they've had one Hockey East recruiting class. And I remember talking one. to him a couple yeah. years ago. And we were talking about the possibility of going up to Hockey East. And he said that the biggest thing is we need to hear as the coaching staff 
where are we? Like, who am I recruiting next year for? Am I recruiting to play St. A's? That's right. Or am I recruiting to play BC and Northeastern and the top teams in the country? Because obviously, you're going to recruit a different caliber of kid, and you, you're you going to need more money for the program. You know, you need a lot more. I, I'm amazed at how, I mean, they, they're not by any stretch going to win the conference. But like you said, they didn't know a lot of these things. The transition's hard as it is, oh, yeah. but not knowing. I mean, UConn had a little, you know, UConn went to Hockey East and their transition was was tough as well, but you had a little little bit more warning. Yes, <laughs> and you were in, UConn was a Division One team at and the time. And they're a Division I school. So it was Division, yeah, right, yeah. Division One going from Division One to Division One, you're going to a bigger conference in Division One, but you know, you're going, you're making a huge leap. That's, that's good, good bid chance. for Holy Cross. That one was just shoveled wide. I like seeing the backhand. I like seeing the defenseman, McBrophy, kind of created that rush by joining the attack. Here comes Army. Dumping in deep. Coglin goes for it. He's bumped off the puck. Between the circles. And that one's deflected wide on the rebound. And Gordon makes a nice stop. Gordon staying with it. And we talked in the first period about that shot that hits the backboards or hits the, the glass there and comes out almost like a centering pass. And that's exactly what happened there. Yeah, the boards. I mean, that wasn't the, the, the intention to play it off the boards there. But those boards, I mean, you see in the NHL a lot. There's passes from the far blue off those boards because they see a guy streaking. But, yep. yeah, they're lively. And I saw that kid hater in warm-ups. Took that sh he must have taken about... 20 of the shots from that specific spot, so he's probably going. <laughs> probably wishing he had that back. Yep. Gerard trying to get it out of the zone. It does clear the zone. And Robinson goes for it. Robinson one on two, pulls up, fires to the middle. Gerard got a stick on it. Steered it wide. Up into the crowd who touched it last. The faceoff will come in the Army zone. Robinson's having a good game. He. Had a good chance in the first period. Three shots on that in the first period. And the, uh, I mean, Coach, Coach Brard specifically was mentioned in him as a as a guy in the second half to step up and contribute. Yeah, he's got four goals this season. Neil Robinson, four goals, eight assists for 12 points. Gerard takes the draw, wins it. Spencer Trap fires off the wall. Ferguson going for it. Robinson in there. Ooh, that was close. Came, they're saying it just came out of the zone. That was really close. I, I, t I was watching Peter, Coach Peter Roundy's reaction, and he, he kind of shook his head. Uh, uh, it's a tough one. Ooh. It's supposed to come completely out, right? You're supposed to be yeah, able to see it, white I ice. Yeah, I mean, it was re that was really, really close, right on the line. Here's Army on the move. Dalton McAfee needs one assist for 50 in his career. Ferguson sends it in deep for Robinson. Army trying to clear. Holy Cross. This deep Battle. pairing is really good for Army. This Wilkinson and McAfee. Brophy steers it up and out. Kessel tried to pick it off. A pretty free-flowing first three minutes here in the second period. A scoreless game between Holy Cross and Army West Point. Yeah, that's a uh, Kessel, Kessel, little aggressive lifting the stick of the the Army defenseman. He got called for interference. So we will see the. It's kind of a way, way from play. the play at the time, and the Kessel just a little too hard on the on the on the stick. So you see it here, you just you know, see the stick go flying out of his hands, which um, you know it was puck wasn't up to them yet, so I think it was a, a fair call on the interference. So now you see the third best power play unit in the country. I mean a huge percentage of their goals. I think 63 half, goals, right? 28. Yeah, it's almost half play. of their goals. So 
Holy Cross's penalty kill unit will try to hold the fort here for two minutes against one of the nation's best power play. Wow, that was a close one too. Ooh. I think, yeah, I think I, I, I did not see that go outside the zone. No, I didn't either, and I think that's exactly. Very close. You talked about how things tend to even out yeah. in a game, whether it's penalties or calls like that. So the faceoff will come outside the Holy Cross zone with a minute 40 remaining on the Army power play. I mean, they like to think that they, that a lot of the refs, it's that they'll just call what they see, but it's just human nature that it, it's penalties usually end up even. Good job by Holy Cross, who won the draw, got it back and took some time off the clock, call it. Shoveled one in on net and raced in deep on the four check. This is that power play breakout that all the teams use now. But. Good poke Good check play. by Laffin, not able to clear it though. Army keeps it in. Wilkinson, nice job along the blue line. Wilkinson going D to D. Shot in front, oh, and Army scores. On the redirect, I think it was the big man in front, Dominic Franco. Yeah, they yep. had two players right in front, which is rare on a power play, but just the way that they kind of shifted the play from the, the, the strong side where the puck was to the weak side, just had kind of a, they were outnumbering Holy Cross in front, so this is just a good good recognition there. And a good, it was uh, less of a pass, it was less of a shot and more of a pass to the front, and the flexion just worked out. So Dominic Franco picks up his 10th goal of the season, his 16th point. The junior from Portsmouth, Rhode Island, one of the leading scorers on this team. He's got 31 career goals. Yeah, that one came up near us. Mike was ready yeah. to make the play, though. He reached out. I felt slow on it. <laughs> he reached out with the glove hand. That's the beauty of this rink, though, is that, you know, you're right on. It's a great vantage point for it us. Is. It can be hard for the cameras because you're you're so close to the ice that you lose it when it's literally basically at your feet. But as an announcer, it's awesome. It's I mean, great. we are literally just a couple feet off the ice. Yeah, we have a really good view of the shots as well, like when the goalies are screened. And that's a good point, and that's what yeah. what happened. The last goal, Army gets the goal on the power play, and their percentage will only go up. Third best in the country coming in, but. They had traffic in front, and they had, you know, people bumping and making it a little bit difficult for Gordon, and he didn't have a clean look at it. So Holy Cross will have to try to look for the equalizer here. Yeah. And you talk about a Franco. I mean, he's big. He's, he's a big guy. He's a leading goal scorer on the team. And he just, you know, you got 6'5", 218. That's old school hockey. That's like 1980s hockey, parking themselves in front of the net. Yeah. Willing to pay the price to take a little punishment. But as a goalie, that's tough. Yeah. And it was a nice play. Avancho was the Army guy that, that he didn't shoot it. Again, he, he was looking for a stick, and he found it, which ended up being a nice tip. And Franco was just, I mean, he's 6'5", and just gobbled up the rebound. Here's a steal. And a mini break. Good job by Holy Cross. Wow, big hit. Dalton Skelly big got hit. tattooed. Skelly did a nice job to get back in the play and break up the centering pass. Then Skelly blocks the shot, but he's a little shaken up right now. I mean, Avancho just, he, Skelly, you just wouldn't expect a player to be coming from that direction. No. And just laid him out. Never saw him. You take a shoulder right into your solar plexus, the middle of your chest. It's gonna knock the wind out of you. Physicality is picking up here. Here's Skelly back for it. He's barreled in too. He's probably looking for a change right yeah, about he now. Yeah, definitely is. <laughs> Army buzzing the net. Gordon with a waffle save. Pops up in front of him. Holy Cross tries to clear. Can't get it out of the zone. McAfee. Shovels one on, a lot of traffic in front. Gordon makes the save, and there are bodies all over the crease. That was a good save by Gordon. It was more, 
looked like a shoulder, like he had to hunch his shoulders almost to make that save. Not, not an easy one. And this hit, I mean, Skelly just did not expect someone coming from behind the net and just got got laid out by Avancho. Avancho's had a, two good shifts in a row, starting with the, the assist on the power play, and then um, kind of he created the turnover in the neutral zone, had, had a break, and then big hit. He's one of the guys that, that Coach Berard had said, you know, one of the guys we got to watch out for. Eric Gordon, the freshman, coming in with a 2.98 goals against Owen, and a beautiful rush for Holy Cross, and Robinson with a bid down the other end. Robinson's having a good game. Gerard collects, softly sends one through the neutral zone into the Army zone. And here comes McAfee. McAfee stick handling. Dishes to the right side. Blocked by Coglin. Wilkinson. Tried to get it to the center. Picked off. Here's Smart Vincent. Play. Vincent play. hustling for the puck. McAfee going back. Vincent shot on save. And Vincent goes crashing into the net. Surprisingly, the net stayed on its moorings. Yeah, I know. Kozlowski didn't get taken down either. And there's a nice glove save by Gordon. I had I said Robinson on that last shift. That was Ferguson, by the way. The Ferguson dude coming back from 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 uh, being out for a little while, so he's looked good. Yeah, uh, he, he looked good. I remember the start of his freshman year last year. He came out of the gates blazing hot. Yeah. Scoring wise, here's Eric Gordon, the freshman from Duluth. Eight nine seven save percentage. And he dumps it in from the corner. Exactly. Call it. Gets a piece of it. Gets outside the zone. And the Crusaders keep it out of their zone. Laughing. Goes back to Spencer Trap. Now Vincent turns and sends it into the Army zone. Call it on the four check. Vincent. Finishes his check, and here come the Black Knights. In the neutral zone into the Holy Cross zone. It is fun to watch Vincent, isn't it? Yeah. Coach Ferrard said that oh, he's there just it gone. Is. Stop! Oh. oh, off the backboard. And the shot slid through the goal mouth. Spencer Trapp with a beautiful bid. Here's Laffin. Carries in deep. Bumped up against the wall. Two on two battle behind the net for the puck. Army comes away with it. Flips it up. This is what you like to see. Slick pinching in a little bit, joining the offense. Yeah. I I, I mean, it's tight. It's tight out there. I think one of the only ways to create a lot of offense is to have odd man situations. And sometimes that's having a defenseman just join the play. Kofi carried that one down, down the wing. Mackey behind the net. Army able to clear it. Coglin pokes it away, Cronella. And it gets outside the Army zone. Holy Cross will have to clear the zone and regroup. This, this defense pairing for Army's been out there a long time. Plunkett, he's been he's really good number 15, but it's hard to change in the second period at this rink. You're not by your bench. That one, a uh, save by Kozlowski, and then he never saw where the rebound went. Popped out front of him about five feet in front, but there was no one there to collect. Spinorama backhand turned aside by Gordon. Holy Cross comes back the other way. Liebold can't connect with Cronella. Now it's Army on the rush. Two on three. The Black Knights with speed. The slap shot from the top of the slot. And it's a flex high and wide. Coglin takes a big hit behind the play. Gordon with the save as he held the short side. And we got a timeout as the tempers begin to flare here at the Hart Center. Army's in front, one nothing.
I'm District Attorney Joe Worley, and I'm proud to partner with Charter Communications with our pledge to help raise awareness that bullying should not be tolerated. From local school students, here is our message. If you see someone getting bullied, stand up for them. We never know what a few words can do. We need to foster safe environments for students in their schools and their communities. Join the anti-bully crusade, take a stand to lend a hand, don't be a bully. Presented by the Law Offices of Joseph J. Coriglia. Hi, my name is Tiffany Holland. I'm Zach Lanning. I'm Megan McGeary. My name is Ed Ryan. And welcome to College of the Holy Cross. So when I was looking at colleges, I had a ton of questions. Like, can I play my violin and study to be a doctor? This is where I ask, how many ways can I surprise people? What does it mean to be on a team? Who am I and where am I headed? At Holy Cross. The more I ask, the more I learn. Holy Cross. Ask more. This is the last last chance for Army. This was, uh, as a coach, you love these ones because you're creating a turnover just through hard work and forecheck and get the shot on net. And then Holy Cross took exception. You saw that little shot after the whistle by the Army player. And a little pushing and shoving after the yep. after the whistle to the point. I was like, hey, you know what? I, if I was the ref, I might have taken both of them, but definitely not one or the other. It's one of the things that you and I were just talking to the break, but I love it about hockey that you get that, you know, there's a little nastiness and a little snarl at, you know, after the whistle, there's pushing and shoving, some talking, some chirping, and imagine if other sports were like that. We said, imagine in basketball, if there's a foul, and then the players come together, they're pushing each other, shoving each other, there's some face washes. And it's just part of the he, sport. He, all right, all right. The refs get in between it and say, all right, let's go. You know, We're good. You know Everyone's what good. always struck me as weird in basketball was, you know, it was okay. Like the rep would blow the whistle. And if you if you're on offense and you had the ball, you might just take a practice shot. I was always like, wait. Like, like if right. someone takes a shot after the whistle. Well, uh, cardinal like, sin in hockey. Even if there's no goalie, it'd be a brawl. Yes. And it's like, don't don't shoot that. You know, <laughs> yeah. My thing is, don't shoot that ball at, at our net. Right. <laughs> Right, in hockey, that's a cardinal sin. Yeah. That's, like you said, that's a fight fightable offense. It's Kevin Durar, the junior from Monroe Township, New Jersey. Oh, I didn't see that. He's going, he got whistled for something. I think it was Ferg Ferguson got, got called for something. Yeah, right? so now here comes that Black Knight power yeah, play again. They score their only goal of the game here in the second period on the power play, their first power play of the night. This this seems like an advantage on the faceoff for Laffin. He's got he's much lower the ice than Franco. I mean he is Franco's six five. Right. He just won it. Leverage. Someone and broke Laffin, a stick too. Laffin, that's the second broken stick he's had today. So Holy Cross is already a man down and now Laffin doesn't have a stick out there. To contend with the third best power play in the country. Your army you take your time here take advantage of this and get a good chance. And the power play too, what's the key? Obviously you want to make the defense move their feet and move a little bit, right? Yeah, I mean, I, I, I feel like in today's game, the key is to get a, a, a guy in a scoring position in the slot and you're constantly aware of where that guy is. So you can't cover everybody and it's an odd man situation, but one guy ready to shoot. I mean, I think the, the if you look at the NHL, the easy, easy examples for, for Washington, Ovechkin stands right at the top of that circle on his, you know, where he can one time it. For the Bruins, it's the opposite circle. It's Patrice Bergeron, and he see, he they, that's where they score all their goals is on the power play in that one spot. I feel like that's part of the key is just getting guys in scoring positions. The shot wide of the net. Gerard pokes it down the length of the ice. Holy Cross will get another change. Second change during this penalty kill unit. A penalty kill opportunity for Holy Cross. Under 30 seconds remaining on the power play for Army. Black Knights get a fresh skater out there. The other key is getting possession in the offensive zone, which is not that easy. But they do a good job of it, Army does. 10 seconds remaining on the Army power play. Black Knights with possession now. Like this guy, 10 is. Yep, and he's calling for be. it too. 
to work a two-man game up top. Holy Cross, Ferguson comes out of the box. The shot is wide, and we are all even. Gordon covers up a smart play by the rookie goaltender. That's a good kill. That's, that's, that's a big one. Yeah. I mean, Holy Cross has had some decent chances kind of off the rush. It'd be good to see him get some, some, some sustained pressure and some shots with traffic in front and some cycling, you know, of the buck down low and just see if they can keep it in there for, you know, a couple shifts at a time. Here's Collett. Collett with a break. Collett tries to go upstairs on the backhand, turned aside. Kozlowski and a Holy Cross player gets thrown into the net. The net knocked off its moorings. And he showed off some speed there, which Collette, he's, he can skate. Almost would have liked to see him shoot that on his forehand. He had a, he just, you can see he went to his backhand and it was a good idea, but I almost want to see, see him fire it. So, Trevin Kozlowski, the sophomore, 6'4", 200 pounds. He has turned aside every shot he has seen so far in this game. 6.57 remaining in the second period. Army in front of Holy Cross, 1-0. The first of two here between it's the Crusaders power, and the Black Knights this Power weekend. play for Holy Cross. Here. I didn't see that one either. Ferguson. I think it was on the back check. That guy that went into the net was... Yeah, interference. Interference the call here, Spencer Trapp. They go way back. Yeah, you're right. And Coglin at his feet. Now it's picked off. Army coming the other way, and Franco with a hard Ooh. wrist shot. He rifles one in. Yeah. Trapp dumps it back for Laffin. Ferguson with Vincent on his right. Ferguson. Carries in deep, tried to center it for Laffin. It was picked off by Franco, who clears it 200 feet down the ice. I'm having trouble setting it up. Power play is half over. I like this. Dalton Skelly. Back for Gerard. Gerard gains his own, puts it on net. Kozlowski steers it to the corner. And we're going to get another penalty. That was a, I was wondering if if Drar had awareness that there was a penalty coming at Army and just kind of dumped it in to give Army possession as quickly as possible so they blow the whistle, which, you know, you, you saw, because in those situations, you want the five and three for right. as long as possible. That's smart. That was a smart play, if that's what he was intending. Yeah, you're right. And they will have a five on three Holy Cross for 41 seconds. I mean, this seconds. is huge. This is huge. Dominic Here, I think you're going to see two guys up on the point as you see like Coglin's on his on his off wing you'll be looking for look for him to take take the one time I'm sorry he's on his off you know offside he's on the right side he's a left left shot so look for him to be taking a one timer looked like he was waiting for it right there in the top of the slot 41 seconds five on three power play for Holy Cross trap to Coglin Coglin shot blocked in front laughing collects Vincent and Trapp, 23 seconds remaining on the two-man advantage for Holy Cross. Here's Coglin. Holy Cross, laughing, switching places up top. Spencer Trapp, Trapp goes up top. Now Coglin's on his left. Trapp shot, save. Kozlowski the rebound. Laffin, Laffin's jamming at it, and a quick whistle. It looked like the puck was loose still. A low slap shot. Looks like he, yeah, oh yeah, kind of a quick quick whistle there. I think he just lost sight of the puck, but um, Army does plays a really, really tight triangle there on the on five on three. And did a good job. I think Holy Cross just got a, I, I hate to sound like an impatient hockey fan, but get some more shots. Yeah, now the five on three is over. Army's coming out of the box. Trap sends it in front. 
And Kozlowski with the glove save. Good traffic in front that time, though, with Holy Cross. Yeah, we, I mean, this is another one we had a good vantage point. He did. Trapped did a good job of avoiding having the shot blocked. But, I mean, we could see, they, they, I mean, goalie saw the puck the entire way. He saw that right into his glove. It was a decent screen, but not a great screen. Holy Cross now has a power play for a minute nine left on this power play. Army killing off a five on three for just under 45 seconds. And a one goal game. The Black Knights chip it in deep. Trap. Around for Laffin. Back for Coughlin now. Here's a bid for Army, a wraparound bid and off the side of the net. Chance that time for Taylor Maruya. He was looking for his second goal of the season. Robinson ridden off the play. Army clears again the length of the ice. 20 seconds remaining on the man advantage for Holy Cross. They trail it by one here in the second period. Dalton Skelly gains the zone. Brophy carries in deep. Skelly. Cross ice, Terrar back to Skelly. Five seconds remaining on the power play. Brophy tried to skip it across. It was intercepted and sent down the ice softly. Army comes out of the penalty box and the Black Knights kill off a big time power play opportunity. Cronella with a quick oh. shot using the defenseman as a screen. That's the shot I like. What? Cronella, another bid. And a great waffle save by Kozlowski. A good shift by Cronella there. He slammed two Army players off the puck, took it, and fired on again. Going upstairs, too, with the butterfly styles. That's one of the places to try to beat the goalies. Here's Cronella. You mentioned a great shift for that Peter Cronella. Yeah, two good chances. Assistant captain, too, one of the leaders of this team. Coach Perard talking a lot about the great leadership from his captains. Coughlin, Cronella, and Laughlin. And looking for a big second half from Cronella too, scoring wise. He was one of the guys you asked him who, who do you think will lead your team in scoring from here on out? Yeah. He mentioned a few guys. He said we, we need to get a few of them going here and get them hot, but Cronella was one of them. Cronella was one of them, Laughlin was one of them. And, I mean, earlier in the year he saw, I thought it was Nice, they had Colette, Laffin, and Cornell as a line, the three kind of senior leaders. And, um, you know, they still have Colette and Laffin together, but that was a really good, I guess, shift by Cornell. I mean, he was physical. He had two, created his own chances there, two two good cho scoring chances. Yeah, he's 6'2", 200. He's a big kid. Power forward, if you will. Trap fires on Kozlowski, the pad save. Liebold battles for it. Liebold collects in front. Dolan to trap. Trap just misses on the far side. Surowick had a good bid in there as well for Holy Cross. Dolan riding his man off the puck. Here comes Spencer Trap out of the wash. Ferguson chips it into the zone. Army comes back, Gordon steers it to the side for Brophy. Brophy takes a big hit behind. Army comes out front, shot from the slot and a save by Gordon. And a good shift that time for Army, Ian Mansfield, the senior. Yeah, Had a good all, look. All started with Wilkinson, the defenseman. Made a, uh, here's, the, here's, the, here's a look at the save. That was a really nice drop pass. And good save, point blank chance. It's hard to get that five hole close, <laughs> close when you don't have that much time, but it's another one where Wilkinson made that breakout pass. It's, it's kind of a pass as hard as you can with the expectation the four will just chip it into the zone. So it's almost like an icing that just gets tipped into the zone, and you see it a lot in college hockey now. It's a good play. Eric Butte, number 16, had a good shift 
for Army, the freshman from Belmont. Army has a lot of Massachusetts kids here. Yeah, Holy Cross has got their share of Massachusetts kids, and you know both squads have some Rhode Island kids. It is. It's great to see the Massachusetts hockey and New England playing at the Division One level. One minute remaining in the period. Slick goes back forward for Holy Cross. Here's Skelly. We talk about all the Massachusetts kids, and then there's Dalton Skelly from Keller, Texas. Yeah. You're reminded of how the game has grown. Yep. Great pass. I mean, puck possession, you talked about it. Might go a few times in the first period, but to Army's puck possession, you look at time of possession in the opposing team zone. Yeah. Army's had it for a long time. Another bid out front. Blocked. And it clears the zone with six seconds to play in the period. Wilkinson goes back for it. He's content to hold on to it. Takes a shot at the end of the period. Two periods in the book. Army gets a power play goal in the second. The Black Knights lead it here at the Hart Center. one nothing after two periods. Our second period intermission will continue after this break with a Worcester News Tonight update. Second period, Holy Cross had some good opportunities too, especially early on. Yeah, and that, that the five on three, I look back on that one, as that was a golden opportunity where would have been great for Holy Cross to get on the board, but as you can see here, they're getting they're getting some chances. I mean, they had a few chances right in front, just like that one, and a few chances off the rush. So, you know, they're only down by a goal and playing at right. home. So, that gotta come out strong in the third. Army power play we got to see early on in the period. Army had two power plays. Of course, yeah, we talked the, about the here's physicality. The goal. Yeah. Big guy out front. Just shovels the backhander home. That was Dominic Franco. His 10th goal of the season. And statistics through two periods of play. Holy Cross is out shooting Army. And that period, Holy Cross owned the faceoff circle. Yeah. That's a good, I mean, the other thing I look at too is, you know, shots sometimes can be this misleading. I feel like in this, in this game, they're not. I mean, Holy Cross had some power play time. It's been a fairly even game, but even at the, you know, a lot of people look at advanced stats like Corsi now, which is, you know, shots attempted for versus shots attempted against. It's a lot, it's a good way to determine possession of a particular player. Or in this case, if you're looking at both teams, it's very even. 36 shots attempted by both teams. Some have been blocked by the de defense, some have been missed shots on net, some have been on net as you just saw there, but it's been a pretty even game. Good look at downtown Man, Worcester sorry, and Route 290 here in Worcester, Massachusetts from atop Mount St. James. And we'll be back here at the Hart Center on Wednesday night. Holy Cross in Army men's basketball. And we'll bring you all the action live at 7 p.m. At 36 shots attempts, and that was last period. So the course for last period was exactly even. How's the Hoops team doing this year? They've been up and down. They, up and down. they had a great uh, early start to the season. They were phenomenal. They're led by sophomores. They start four sophomores, and, and one senior in the sophomore class has been fantastic. And then they've kind of been up, up and down, down in the Patriot League. The Patriot League is a lot like the Atlantic Hockey League. It's just a lot of parity. On, right. You know, it's one of those any given night. Yep. Any given night. Like Holy Cross, the men's team has had a couple guys – They've had four or five players scoring in double figures routinely in games, and a couple times they've had two guys twenty points or more. So yeah. they've got the they've got the firepower. It it, it kind of with with so much parity, almost makes the playoff format logical, right? In a lot of cases, it's like, hey, every right. team shouldn't make the playoffs, but it's almost like, well, all these teams are within five points of each other. So right. you know, it it. it it used to be that there was different tiers in the league. You had like a top tier of three teams, a middle, and then like a bottom three tiers. That just doesn't exist anymore. No, no you mentioned it, AIC. I remember Bentley for years, too, was at the yep. bottom 
Uh, but that is not the case at all anymore. Yeah. And, of course, Bentley just opened that $50 million rink oh last man. year. I think they played Army. That was the first time they, they christened the rink last year. It was a Bentley Army game. But, you know, when you look at the non-league schedule now of, of Atlantic hockey teams, and routinely the first two months of the season, you'll see Atlantic hockey beating the Big East, beating the Big Ten, you yeah. know, be, and beating top 20 teams. It's not uncommon anymore. It's not like even... To some, to those, the hockey circles, it's not even eye-opening anymore. Yeah. I asked both coaches, I said, do you think it's time that the regular season champion gets an automatic bid to the NCAA tournament? Because right now, just the tournament champion gets an automatic bid. And the last three years, right, there's only 16 teams that make the tournament. The last three years, the Atlantic has won. The three, of the, three of the last four years, they've knocked off the top seed in the tournament. So they're winning games in the tournament, so should they get an automatic bid if, for the regular season champion? And they both said maybe not just yet. Once they're they're doing okay at non-conference, but once their non-conference during the regular season picks up, then maybe revisit it. Which I thought was a fair, fair answer. You know, one of the things too, and this is, uh, it, go, it speaks to volumes too, even the difference between the two sports. You know, UMass came in here when they were ranked number one in the country, and they're playing here at the Hart Center. Providence came in, they might have been third in the country at the time, played here at the Hart Center. And for years, some of the Big East, or now Atlanta ACC teams, Boston College, UMass, would say to Holy Cross, we'll play you in basketball, but not at the Hart Center. We'll only play you at the DCU Center. We're not gonna play at the Hart Center. And I think it speaks volumes to the hockey community and what the coaches are and what the players are that, yeah, we'll play you. I mean, this is a yeah. tough rink to play at. You're, the fans are right on top of you. It's a small rink. It's a low ceiling. So they could say, no, 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 we'll play you only at the DCU Center downtown. But they say, no, we'll play you and we'll play you in your building. Yeah. It was pretty and cool. I like that. The atmosphere against those those hockey East teams was, was awesome. Oh, fantastic. You know, you can't beat it. And for students to be able to, you know, just walk up from their dorm room and to be right here and, and watch that kind of brand of college hockey is awesome. Brophy with the backhander, Kozlowski the save. And for the Worcester community, the, the Central Mass hockey community, you know, to be able to, to come and watch a UMass and a Providence. Durar yeah. fires. I mean, you see some future NHLers out there. Yeah, it's a great opportunity. Durar had two goals last weekend. And then whenever they get the band here, it's a shame the band isn't oh, playing tonight. That's, that's, I, to me, that's, oh. That's great. And you could even take half of the band. Take half of the band and put them on there. And Oh, actually, they got a couple members down over there now. It brings a great atmosphere. Yeah, I, I agree. Feels like college. When yes, you band. It, you're yeah. right. Exactly right. One of the things you always love about the bean pot, Absolutely. you know, is that yep. each school brings a full band and the cheering sections and the chanting. It's great. Bean pots this week. It's got a different feel to it. It used to just feel like BU and BC, and now right. it's kind of flipped around. Northeastern, the defending champions. Yeah. Paul Pearl, That's the associate head coach of Boston University. So he's been in the bean pot as a member of that Harvard staff for a few years, and now his first year with a member of the BU staff with another former Holy Cross assistant who's the head coach at BU right now. That's right, yeah. Yeah, it'd be interesting to see what they do. I, I mean, it's it's BU. They're always going to get tier one, right. tier one player. So even though I, I feel like Northeastern's kind of the favorite, the favorite this year. Only a matter of time before BC and BU retool. And yeah. Yeah, it's a rare down year for BC. Yeah. And BU, of course, had that class a couple years ago that. Oh, yeah. I mean, oh, that freshman class, how many of them were first round draft picks? Four of them, something yeah. like that. I mean, it's just a Jack few Eichel years ago. The class. Eichel, and then they got Clayton Keller and Charlie McAvoy. And yep. they, they've. they've Jordan Greenway was, it, was was there then too, so. That's right. Big, big, strong kid, power forward. 
Now, did you play for the Worcester Box when you were here? Did Paul Pearl have the Worcester Box going? No. Oh, no. he had that one he had started, with, which would be on uh, Bean Pot Monday. But the team itself, the Holy Cross team, would, would divide up into teams of three, and you'd make your own team names, and then he had white athletic tape literally around a cereal box, and the winners got to put their names on the box, deflected up into this netting, a good bid for Army. But it was great. It was the Worcester yeah, box. Great. Yeah. Pierre Napper Fernet. I remember that group yep. uh, playing in it, and I and came up and, and covered it one night. And oh, it, it, you know, of course, it's just a practice. But it was three on three games. It was outstanding. And that was their answer to the bean pot. Was That's the Worcester too box? Funny. Too funny. I heard about it. We had the our big one was the Captain's Cup, the preseason. You know, before the coaches could get involved. The, the captain's cup. It was four teams and it's competitive. It's great. It was fun. Well, and hockey is such a long season. It you is. know, I mean, you have to find ways to make it fun because yeah. it is the longest college sports season, any sport. And you're not talking, you're talking about a very physically demanding oh, game. Yeah. yeah. Practices are so demanding. And of course, the games themselves are so physically demanding. I mean, it's it truly it's really a survival of the fittest sometimes. Yeah. We talked to coaches before the game about just the conditioning tests that these oh. teams do. And it's, you know, Army has a pretty famous one in the college hockey circle. It's called the, the Heinz test, which is, you know, it's, it's changed a little bit now, but it used to be 10 miles an hour on the treadmill at a 10 incline as long as you can go. Oh, um, God. That was a really good chance and a good save. Freshman Gordon has looked good tonight for yeah. Holy Cross. He keeps it a like one-goal game. Kind of made it e easy. He had a good chance here. I feel like he kind of made it easy. He shot it right in his chest. Yep. That's a unfortunate turnover. Just, just Skelly just, just whiffed on it. Yeah. And they'll reface it off. To the left of the freshman Eric Gordon. Holy Cross trails it one nothing. Call it. Call it. Sends it into the Army zone, and the Black Knights try to regroup and set up a rush. You and I were talking before about the great goaltending that Army has had through their history and most recently with Parker Gehagen, who was one of the best in the nation. Yeah, we called one of the games when, when Gehagen was the goalie. I mean, just in warm-ups, he just was one of the smoothest moving goalies that it, I'd ever seen. I, I still don't think we've, we've heard the end of it when he's, he's, he's serving his, his time now, but when that's up, I wouldn't be surprised to see him in the professional ranks. And that's, again, we talk about it, and the, the tremendous respect we have for all of the student athletes at West Point. You, but you're looking at these hockey players, and, you know, they all know full well what they're getting into. They're playing Division I college hockey, but when their four years is up, then they're going to lead Army and lead artillery and, you know, on the field of battle, and they're going to put themselves in harm's way to defend us and our freedoms. Yep. We mentioned, I just mentioned that conditioning test is, they call it the Heinz test. It's named after a former player that paid the ultimate sacrifice. That, which is a reminder of it, just the commitment, the character of these kids. Ooh, Army out front had a little bit of time with that one. And the, the three Army captains all going into their branch of service, field artillery. Yeah. So, you know, I mean, they're going to be right literally on the front lines. So while other kids can kind of, college hockey players can think about playing pro or dream about playing pro afterwards, these guys will be defending our country. Army right now trying to get it out of their own zone. Center ice, flip it in. Brophy goes for it. Slick. Matt Slick, a freshman from Buffalo, New York, Ooh. off the side of the net. 
A sneaky shot. That was a sneaky shot, yeah. Wow, Franco, point blank. That's wow. a big save. Big save. Gordon with a great stop to keep this a one goal game. Well, he's exactly what we, we thought and what we talked to the coaches about going into it. You know, you, third period, it's yep. gonna be it's gonna be tight as every game is. And here we are with 13 minutes remaining in the game and it's a one goal game. Yeah, I mean, it, these are teams that have, you know, they play good defense and responsible and they back check it. Yeah. Score! Holy Cross gets the equalizer. The wrist shot. And the Crusaders have evened it up. Logan Milliken, the sophomore, with his second goal of the season. That's a big one. That was a good shot. It, was, it, it looked like he had a good look at it. He just beat him. Just beat just beat the goalie, nice slap shot. It was deceptive. It looked like he was going to shoot it kind of to the right, to the right post and really disguised that shot. It went short side. Really nice shot. The, yeah, you're uh, right. And he, yeah, had a, he had a good look at it, too. It's interesting. Milliken is, you know, they have this new rule in college. It used to just be um, 18 skaters and, and two goalies. So it was usually 12 forward, six defensemen, and then you have your goalies, and they institute this rule they call it, I think they call it the extra skater. Yeah, that's exactly. So it could be a defenseman, it could be a forward. Milliken is technically the extra skater for tonight, so it's really good to see him get a goal. I saw he hasn't had a lot of time, so to see him capitalize like that, hopefully earns him some more time. That's uh, just his, his second goal of the season, his second career goal. Logan Milliken, Milliken from Canmore, Alberta. But a huge one for Milliken and Holy Cross as the Crusaders tie it up with 12.25 to play. So here we are, third period, under 12 and a half minutes to play, and we're all tied up. Yep, hopefully for Holy Cross, it's five on five the rest of the way or on that right. power play. That's a nice play by Skelly. Laffin tried to wrap it around, and it was, as you mentioned, it was a, on purpose. That was a pass off the boards from yeah. Skelly. Do it again. Skelton. Yeah. Battle along the far wall. Here's Skelly. Holy Cross getting some traffic in front. Vincent on the wing. Vincent gets it up top to Skelly. Skelly fires through traffic. Kozlowski never saw that. I think it hit yeah. his shoulder and deflected at a 90 degree angle right across the goal mouth and to the far boards. Call it with a good poke check. Skelly's got he's got really quick feet. He's a fast skater, but he could really like on that shot. It was just did a couple quick moves to to prevent the guy from blocking the shot. Here comes Army back the other way. Trophy good position. Coglin shovels it out and takes a big hit for his troubles. Here's Robinson on the four check with Call It. Gerard jumps in and keeps it in. Army able to block it. And here come the Black Knights on the rush. Mansfield cut off at the pass by two Crusaders. Gerard through the neutral zone. Softly sends a backhander in as Holy Cross goes for a change. 1-1 tie here at the Hart Center. 10.35 to play in the game. These same two teams will play here tomorrow night. Spencer Trapp. Here's Trapp. Trapp on the rush. Fires across just wide. Cronella on the four check, and here comes Army out quickly. Trapp will send it up quickly for Peter Cronella. Cronella, one-on-one. -on -one. Oh, nice move. Beautiful move. Just slowed up enough yeah. by McAfee. He 
He's got the a big man stick. so He's strong. Got a heavy stick. Dominic yeah. Franco, so strong on the puck. Still got a scoring opportunity off. No, he can't get another. Earn himself some more time. Yeah, another shift. Laffin bangs it off the wall. Surowick will race for it with McAfee. Oh, McAfee no. blows the tire. Laffin. Surowick sends it off the back wall. Here comes Army the other way. Some end-to-end -end action. Both teams go for a change. Milliken got the equalizer just a couple minutes ago. Robinson took a good poke. Good stretch pass from Army. I think you had mentioned it. I don't know if it was on camera or off mic, but just the, the passing. Yeah. And, you know, the long passes, the stretch passes, if you will, and how accurate they are and how quickly they are. Yeah, and even they when there. they're not accurate, these, I mean, if it's to a bat, if it's to someone's backhand or their skates, and it, I mean, they handle it with ease. Right. Here's Robinson. Robinson takes a shot. Ferguson bumped off the puck. Here comes Army. Back at it. Battle behind the play. And we've got a timeout here. In the third period, Holy Cross getting the equalizer. We are tied at one. Accidents involving distracted driving injured over 400,000 Americans last year. If you or a loved one has been injured in a car or motorcycle accident before you call your insurance company, call the law offices of Joseph J. Coriglia. Our attorneys have helped tens of thousands of clients receive millions of dollars in settlements for over 50 years. Don't stand alone against the big insurance companies. Call the law offices of Joseph J. Coriglia for a free consultation. We don't get paid unless you do. Good rivalry tonight in high school boys basketball. Nick Soder with a wicked swat leads to the offense. And it's Soder cashing in from long distance in girls basketball. First quarter, Reagan McDonald with a three. In girls hockey, Carolina O'Keefe chipping one home for the goal. Bishop's going up 1-0. Nezzalillo, far down. Oh, snipe show. That's a sweet goal. Here we go. Here's a look at the first goal. That's a nice pass by Vancho. Looking for a stick there. And Franco just got the rebound. The big guy in front. Really, he's had a nice game. He's a big player. And here's the Holy Cross goal. Milliken with just a good shot. Deceptive shot. Looked like he was going far side and went short side. And just beat the goalie. Yeah, you're right. And Kozlowski thought the same way that you did, that he was going to go far side. Yeah, Started to slide over there just a Kozlowski, little bit. Saw Kozlowski leaning a tiny bit. Well, another frigid night here in the city of Seven Hills, Worcester, Massachusetts. We're glad you could join us for tonight's broadcast of NCAA Hockey. Kevin Shea with Mike McGuire and our entire Charter TV 3 broadcast crew. Coach Riley and his staff looking to get game one of this weekend doubleheader, if you will. And both coaches, and, and they always do talk about you know how important it is to win the first game of the weekend because you feel like you're almost playing with house money Definitely. on Saturday yeah. night. If you look at like at USCHO, US College Hockey Online, they usually do picks. You know before before all the games, and I feel like almost every one now is split, split, yeah. split. <laughs> like right. it's the safe thing to no, to predict right. is that there's going to be a split. And that's usually how it goes. Yeah. Usually exactly how it goes. And like you said, even if one night, and it's rare that it is, but even if one night is, say, one team wins 6-1, well, the next night the other team wins 2-0 right. or 3-2. to two. Yeah. You know, a team can – it doesn't mean anything. Once that game's over and that night's over, whether it was a one-goal win or a five-goal win. Right. It's – a couple weeks ago, Army played – Air Force, and I mean, that's a pretty awesome rivalry. Yeah. 
and both games were 2-2. I'm like, I kind of almost feel like I just expect that Army <laughs> Air right. Force game. Army Air Force game. Well, predict predictable. Great game. I'm sure they were great games. And just yeah. Ties. Yeah, you're right. They're going to be tight checking games. Hockey Night in Worcester is presented by the law offices of Joseph J. Cariglia. Joseph J. Cariglia, proud to sponsor NCAA hockey on Charter TV3. There's David Berard, former goalie at Providence College. And they went to the NCAA tournament twice during his four years. His son, Brett, we talked about as part of that National USA U17 team, practicing, playing, and living and going to school out in Plymouth, Michigan. And Coach Berard's son, Brett, committed to Providence. So yep. it, it obviously, you know, and, he, and he's obviously smiling when we talk about it, but what a thrill. It for, is. You know, he, he, he's from he Warwick, grew up too. in Rhode yeah. Island, right. He played in, at U at uh, Providence College, and then to have his son commit there, and the family still lives in Rhode Island. Yep. You know, I mean, just what a cool thing for Very that cool. family, for the Berard family. I'm sure that Brett's going to be Feels like he's going to be playing against his dad <laughs> next year, and then oh, nice score! Goal Holy Cross! Don't know if Collin got it, if it, it was, was deflected Coughlin, yeah. or not. Coglin firing from a tough angle. Collin was in front. It finds the back of the net, and the Crusaders with two third period strikes take the lead. I don't know if he caught him off guard, but it was an off angle, and he just got a nice. Nice shot right inside the right post. I don't know if he was expecting it or not or had a screen. Looked like Mitch Collette might have had a good screen on it. But another good one. I mean, this is, again, a, a lot of offense coming from the defense. This is both goals scored by defensemen in third period. And You're right. Kind of like you had said earlier, it's get some bodies in front. Mitch Collette, I, th I think he did have a good screen on this last game. Short side, too, both times. Holy Cross coming from behind. Such a tough thing to do against this Army squad or any team in Atlantic hockey. And the Crusaders, two third period goals, have a 2-1 advantage with six minutes even to play as Gordon makes the glove save and he hangs on. I mean, Army's had a couple chances. Franco had a chance and Fiddler, number 10, had a chance on that turn, the Skelly turnover. But other than that, I feel like Holy Cross, this has been their best period, aside from just the goals, obviously, but I feel like they're playing more in the Army zone than they have been. Yeah, Johnny Coughlin gets the goal. Call it with the screen. He's had a good year. Coughlin leads the team in scoring, and here he comes, carrying the puck in. He's got some really nice offensive skill. He scored a Really nice goal at Merrimack this year. Seventh goal of the season for Johnny Coughlin. There's a good chance right there by Cornella. Coughlin coming in, ranked fifth in scoring amongst defensemen. And this is one by Cornella's had a really nice game. He's getting some chances and right there, just, I mean, Never know, those could trickle through the five hole, right through the leg sometimes, so. He's had a good game, he's, and we asked coach, coach before the game, who's, who he thinks the hardest player to play against on your team? I thought it was a good sign that he think about for a long time, because yeah. he was probably going through a lot of players. Vincent was one that he mentioned, but tonight, Cornell, I feel like Cornell has had a really, really heavy game, play, playing good, creating his own chances, four checking hard. Skelly sends it around the horn. Under five minutes to play. Call it. The steal in the neutral zone. Robinson had to turn around for it. Sends it back to Gerard. Here's Slick. Slick just softly sends it in. Behind for Gerard, who accepts it. Up top, Brophy the slapper. Up and over the crossbar. Gerard. Turns and picks it off in the neutral zone and fires it in. Holy Cross gets a change. Good heads up play by Durar. And then the defense for Holy Cross. Four guys back. Lee Bold. 
tried to split the defense. Coughlin off of a couple Army players. Lee Bold with a good poke check. Yeah, he's got some explosiveness to him, to his game. He's trying to get it out of the zone now to get a change. Yeah. That's the that's the tough part about it's hockey. Like you have tired. a couple physical plays, and then you're gassed, and then the other team gets it, and you're like, oh man. <laughs> it out. Sirwick got a piece of it. It goes up and into the net. And the faceoff will come to the left of Eric Gordon with 3.31 to play in the third period. And Holy Cross with a 2-1 lead. Yeah, I think you're going to see I'm, I'm guessing that Coach Riley's going to come back with at least at least one more shift for that fiddler hater of Ancho line. avancho has been, he's a good player. Hater's got a ton of speed. Fiddler's had some chances. I wouldn't be surprised if he tries to get them out there one, maybe two more times. And Franco as well. Is, yeah, I, I could see that too. Know, Double they, shift your top two lines. If they get to a point where they're pulling their goalie, I know who's going to be standing in front. Oh, yeah. The immovable object. Oh, wow. Shot. Waffled off to the side by Gordon. Holy Cross able to clear it out. Sirwick chases. Brophy has it. Brophy rims it around. Picked off by Army. Battle for the puck. In the corner. Still loose. In the slot. Slick blocked it, and they're going to call a hand pass. I think Slick would argue that maybe he got a stick on it before someone else touched. But yeah, so they're coming back. Wilson, Franco, Billick. This is these guys are good. Wilson's got a really good shot. You call it a timeout. Yeah, Army's going to call the timeout. No, Holy Cross is going to call for the timeout. Coach Berard with 2:43 to play. He'll call for the timeout. And this would be the standings right now. Holy Cross is 12 points. Army's got 17. You think about, I mean, just going from, just closing that gap from, you know, five to three, and potentially one, if you could pull off a sweep, right. is like, well, I mean, and that's such, every point is so, so critical. Yeah, and you're right about that. If you, you look at it and you say, okay, if we could ever pull a sweep on this weekend, a sweep on next weekend, and, you know, Holy Cross is in the middle right now or the start of a six-game homestand. Uh, so you're able, yeah. able to sweep. You sweep this weekend and next weekend, you literally would jump to the top 25% of the league, the top quarter, top third of the league. Yeah. You know, if not, if not even higher. Yeah, you have 10 games left. And the, the way that the playoffs work, the top five teams get a bye. It's going to be tough to get into that top five. Yeah. But if you're, you know, six, seven, you're hosting a playoff game. You're right. Versus having to go on the road. So getting one of those, I mean, these, these wins help you get there. Yeah. And, that, you know, obviously the sweep is huge. Wow. Coughlin's going to get called penalty. for interference. But you're right. You get it. You get a sweep and you make a big jump and you take a big step towards getting into that yeah. situation where your first round playoff game is at home. This is going to be interesting. I wouldn't be surprised if this is a six on four. So this penalty, he got him a little high after this. I don't think it was a necessarily a bad call. It was a tad unnecessary. Big kill. I guess the only upside, the only silver lining is you could potentially ice it at an open net. So if they pull the goalie, it looks like they're going to keep him in for, for at least a little while. I'd look for them to go on the power play for a little while. If they get a whistle, possibly call a timeout, pull the goalie, go six on four for the for the remainder. Yeah, Kozlowski looking over at the bench, and he's, he's a good 10 feet out of his net. But here comes the third-ranked power play in the country. Army trailing by one. 
Slap shot blocked block. and wow, cleared by play. Holy Cross. Beautiful play by Mitch Collett. The two senior forwards out there. Nice, nice job. Under two minutes to play in the game. A minute 30 on the power play. Army gains the zone. And they'll set up their power play. Slap shot wow, got through. And Gordon got a pad on it. And Holy Cross flicks it out of the zone. He's gonna Vincent be, battles for it. He's going to be coming up with the play. He's coming out with the play, my guess is. He's you called up. it, Mike. You called it. Yep, he's Coach Riley's calling for him to come. Army sends it into the zone. The extra attacker is on. They've they pulled the goalie. It at the open net here. And here's a shot at the open net. Goes to the side. 45 seconds remaining on the power play. A minute three in the game. 2-1 Holy Cross. Army sends it in softly behind the net. You have to weather a storm here. And the Black Knights have control now as they set up their power play. Shot wide, but intentionally wide off that back wall. It was the big guy, Franco. Shot through, wide. Gordon, it's on the back of the net. Army chops it free. One-timer, oh, and it somehow finds the back of the net. Through a maze of bodies, Avancho gets his ninth of the season with five seconds remaining on the power play and 25 remaining on the game clock. I don't know how that snuck through. That was, I don't want to call it a fluke, but there were his bodies in front, and it just, I don't even think he got all of the one-timer. No, I, I don't he, think so I think he, he mishit it a little bit, and it just snuck through. And Did it get, it might have even gotten deflected by one of the Holy I Cross players trying to yeah, block it. I think you're right. I think it might have got deflected. It was tough timing. Just about to kill off that penalty, like literally a couple seconds left. Mancho's had a good game. I mean, he is, he is a good player. He created that first goal as well with that kind of shot pass. Well, these are two teams that average two and a half goals a game. And we're here we are tied at two with 15 yeah. seconds remaining in regulation. Army's going to call a timeout. So Coach Riley they have gambled. He pulled the goalie with, the, with the, the man advantage, and it paid off. A six on four. Power play, it pays off. They got the goal with five seconds remaining on the power play. Yeah, we talked about it. They were 28 of their 63 goals coming into this game were on the power play. Now, now it's 30 of 65, so right. I wouldn't be surprised to see them bump up. I mean, they're two for two tonight on the power play. They were already clicking at 28%. At You're right. I wouldn't be surprised if they're one or two. In the nation, it is odd. I mean, usually teams that have a good power play, you think of like Tampa Bay and the and the NHL, right. they score all the time, not just right. on the power play. These guys they score a lot on the power play. It hasn't fully translated to five on five yet. But Robert Morris was like that. We saw Robert, Robert Morris. Morris here a couple times, and yeah. that was a team that you know flat out Lethal could score power, five on yeah. five. They were so dangerous and and had a great power play too. But yes. they were a team that it didn't matter if they were man up or, or five on five. They were phenomenal yeah. with the talent and, uh, you know, the amount of goals that that team put up. So the faceoff will come to the right of Eric Gordon. Dominic Franco. He's mixing up the lines a little bit. Right? Coglin chips it up. Holy Cross able to get it out of the zone. Jack Sarawick. Three seconds remaining. Blast, and it's blocked by Durar. And we'll go to overtime. So tied at two, we're going to go to overtime. We'll take a quick timeout. When we come back, extra hockey here from the Hard Center. 
accidents involving distracted driving injured over 400,000 Americans last year. If you or a loved one has been injured in a car or motorcycle accident, before you call your insurance company, call the law offices of Joseph J. Coriglia. Our attorneys have helped tens of thousands of clients receive millions of dollars in settlements for over 50 years. Don't stand alone against the big insurance companies. Call the law offices of Joseph J. Coriglia for a free consultation. We don't get paid unless you do. Good rivalry tonight in high school boys basketball. Nick Soder with a wicked swat leads to the offense. And it's Soder cashing in from long distance in girls basketball. First quarter, Reagan McDonald with a three. In girls hockey, Carolina O'Keefe chipping one home for the goal. Bishop's going up one nothing. Nezzalillo, far down. Oh, snipe show. That's a sweet goal. Welcome back, everyone. So we're going to go to overtime here. Before we do, uh, Mike, I know you and the and the Holy Cross hockey community are thinking about uh, a good friend of yours and a former player here, Lance Brady. Yeah, Lance, um, I mean, it's a tight, tight-knit alumni community. Lance is one of those guys that every everyone knew. He's just a really great guy. He's a really great hockey guy. He's a great player, a great person, and it's pretty sick. So we're all thinking of him. And, um, yeah, he's everyone. Everyone really liked him, and and, and um, yeah, it's tough, tough time right now. I know a lot of the guys that are were really close to him are really broken up about it. And our thoughts are with him. And then he coached at Assumption College coached and, at Assumption. and brought Did that really program well up. Yeah. They won the NE ten title under. Lance Brady and you and I were talking to Nick Smith, assistant athletic director here at Holy Cross, who was the athletic director at Assumption when Lance was the coach over there and you know he said the same thing that they're just beside themselves. We're underway in overtime. It's a five minute overtime. Sudden death. Wow, that was a good hustle to, to prevent that from, from being an icing. Good job to poke it away by Spencer Trapp. Get a flick. Ferguson. Brunella had it poked off of his stick. Here's Ferguson through the neutral zone with speed. Ferguson carries in deep, puts on the brake, spins back, looks for some help. Army has it. Brophy keeps it in the zone. Softly sends it in. Laffin will go in on the four check. Army with a stretch oh, pass, almost, almost connected. Here's Brophy. Laugh and Vincent. And what changes in overtime, if anything, strategically? Well, I guess, I, I know you don't really want to think this, but you get a point for a tie. <laughs> you don't get a point for an overtime loss. So I don't want to say play for the, play. I don't think any of these guys play for the, for the point, but I also don't think there's going to be a lot of huge chances by defensemen. A lot, of, a lot of risky, risky chances. And is it just a thing too, where the coaches will say, if if you have a shot, take it. Let's just fire pucks at the net and see what happens. Yeah, definitely. Slick deflected on. Gordon Absolutely. got a piece of it. Army on the attack here. Here's Spencer Trap. Trap. You just want to get the puck out of your zone, I'm sure. Yeah, if you're a defenseman, nothing fancy. Just get it out. Make a good pass. Here's Trap. Carries down low. Trap trying to wrap it around. Sends it back behind the net for Vincent. Conglin with a blast. Kozlowski the save. And the rebound comes out front. And a few guys having cracks at it. Durar. Coglin gets help that time. Good job by. The back checking of call it. Free flowing overtime here. Right behind. Ooh. Army in deep now. Coglin gives chase. Call it. They battle for it on the wall. Black Knights from the blue line deflected by Durar. 
Army with possession now. Call it good physical play along the wall. And we get our first whistle of overtime with 2.24 to play in the extra session. Mitch Collett, the senior, with 38 career points. I'm sure Coghlan wouldn't mind getting the overtime winner. He went from, you know, he's probably a guy that you, you watch the tape and you're like, hey, you know, Johnny won the game for us. And then he got the penalty to put them down, but be nice to see him do something really good in overtime here. Here's Ferguson, rubbed off the puck in the neutral zone. Army sends it back in. Brophy behind his net. Centering pass, no one there. Oh, give it up. Here's Ferguson, gets it ahead. Oh, Cronella just couldn't collect it. It was just a little bit behind him. He would have walked in alone. Oh, and Army's too bad. offsides. That's too bad. He had a clear breakaway, clean oh. cut breakaway. 152 remaining here in the extra frame. Yeah, this was just inches. I mean, he almost felt like oh. the receiver that started running before he made the catch on that one. But I could see uh, Coach Berard's body language on that one was just like, oh, come on. Just missed it by inches. Here's Trap. Trap. Through the defense, just had it poked away at the last minute, continues to battle for it. Slick sends it back in with a minute 31 to play here in overtime. 2-2 game, Holy Cross and Army. It was 2-0 in the third, Holy Cross, or 2-1 rather. 1-0, had my math all screwed up. 1-0 in the third, and Holy Cross had two third period goals to take the lead and then Army scored with under a minute to play in the game to tie it up. Brophy stands his man up. Coughlin goes back for it. Vincent hammered as he gets rid of the puck. Under a minute to play. Brophy will get it. Brophy avoids a big hit in the back end. Army has the puck now. 35 seconds to play. Traffic in front, wow. whistle just high. A lot of bodies in front, including Dominic Franco, who has the puck now. One-timer wow, and a beautiful nice save. save by Gordon. Stick save by the freshman, Gordon. A lot of traffic in front. Army just trying to get one on net now through the wash, off the back oh, end. Man. We're gonna have a penalty called with 11.8 seconds to play in overtime. Alex Wilkinson was the man firing from the point. This face off, I mean, yeah, this was, I mean, they had a lot of traffic in front and I'm sure Holy Cross was thinking he's not gonna call anything right, right now, but his stick got in there. And yeah, he's, that's a good call. Um, face off is, is huge here. Yep. I mean, if you can win the faceoff and game. ice it down, that's the game. If you lose the faceoff, you're scrambling to try and block a shot. I mean, these D, Wilkinson, and I imagine Mac, Mac if he's going to be out. He already called it. Does he get another timeout in overtime? I don't, see, I don't know, but I know David Berard is livid because he was uh, Army. I don't know. They were working on a player's equipment, but they, essentially it was like a timeout. David Berard was yelling, let's go, let's go. You could hear it from up here. He was saying, what are you doing? Are you giving him a timeout? But Army did, in fact, call a timeout. So Coach Riley. I'm wondering if he's arguing a missed, potential missed call. Looked like he was pointing to something that might have happened back in the Army end. 11.8 um, seconds. Yep. I think you got to watch out for here. This, I imagine it's going to be Wilkinson McAfee on the points. If Army wins the faceoff and gets it back to these guys, they're really good at, I mean, little moves, just a little move to the right or the left to prevent someone from blocking the shot and get it through to the net. Those are the things where if they lose the draw, 
to watch out for. These two, this is a really good deep pairing. Yeah, right. it, it is uh, Wilkinson and McAfee. Michael Wilson Think will take the draw Lafton's against been doing Michael Lapp tonight on, on draws. Loose puck still. McAfee tees it up. Wow. Oh, and it got through somehow and just was deflected wide. Franco goes to get it. Time runs out. Holy Cross holds the fort at the end. A man down for the final 11 seconds. Well, you Got know, Holy point. Cross is going to be upset <laughs> because yeah. they had the lead late. But as you mentioned, it's a point it's against a, point. a team that's above you in the standings. Yep, and you need that going into the Every point, every point counts in this league, and you need that going into the playoffs. So they got him again tomorrow night. If they could pull off a win, that'd be huge. Yeah, a three-point weekend would be. So a great game tonight between two very determined hockey teams. They go to overtime. It ends in a 2-2 tie. Our next broadcast will come your way Wednesday night. We'll be back here at the Hart Center, but across the hall at the basketball arena. It'll be Holy Cross and Army in men's basketball for Mike McGuire. Sean Grady, Dave Bulldock, and our entire Charter TV3 crew. I'm Kevin Shea. Thanks for watching, everyone. So long from the Heart Center, where Army and Holy Cross skate to a 2-2 tie.